Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The first national Papal march will pass through the streets of Warsaw this Sunday. The initiative was born out of a simple desire for everyone to manifest their opposition to the unlawful and disgusting attacks on our compatriot St. John Paul II. He was full of such calmness, such normality. St. John Paul II. Most Poles knew him only from media reports. When he came to his homeland, millions wanted to listen to his homilies. He was a great man, and this greatness was manifested in humility and love for thy neighbor. This is how the Holy Father is remembered by his personal driver. He was interested in every person. There was no consideration of whether the person was a believer or a non-believer. He sacrificed time for everyone. For him, it was the person who mattered, and he was hardworking even in the car when we were driving. He was not idle. He was always reading something. Something. And when we were stuck in traffic caused by crowds, he was always writing something, taking notes. The Holy Father's contribution to the overthrow of communism cannot be overestimated. Historians believe that the election of Cardinal Karol Wojtyla as head of the Catholic Church and his subsequent numerous pilgrimages to the homeland gave Poles the needed hope to fight for a free Poland. He helped us become free because he himself was a free man, because who Whoever lives the gospel becomes a free man of truth, and perhaps that is why it is so dangerous for the world today. Such prophets are killed and persecuted by the world also after death. Pilgrim Pope, this is what St. John Paul II was often nicknamed. During his pontificate, he visited almost 130 countries. He wrote 14 encyclicals in which he addressed issues of doctrine of faith, organization of the church, Christian and social life. All the more reason for us to return to a teaching so fundamentally simple and so fundamentally clear, which was the teaching of St. John Paul II. For us Poles, his speeches, his apostolic journeys remain to this day a very concrete and very strong guide for times of various contemporary crises. At the beginning of March, the TVN station aired a deceitful report that put forth the thesis that Karol Wojtyła, while he was still Cardinal of Kraków, covered up pedophilia in the church. This is an attack on the symbol of the church, on the symbol of Polishness, a symbol that was synonymous with the values, history, traditions of the church, everything that Poland carried for more than 1,000 years. This Sunday, April 2nd, the first National Papal March will pass through the streets of Warsaw. The initiative is grassroots and apolitical. Anyone can take part in it. All who want him to remain in authority for Poles all who want to follow the path set by his teaching, all those who disagree with what is happening now in some media. Already declarations to come to the march are being made by people from all over the country. These include families with children, Catholic associations and patriotic organizations, including Gazeta Polska clubs. In fact, everywhere, in Słupsk, Pomerania, there is a great stir, and this defense of his holiness will be very visible. We are very strongly connected with our Saint John Paul II. This is the greatest authority. At this moment, we have two full buses. When today he is being dragged through the mud by those he defeated in the past, we must not remain silent. One cannot desert. The hypnosis of the hypocritical media will disappear if we are together again, as when he came to us. On Sunday, April 2nd at 11 a.m., let's meet at the Domowski Roundabout in Warsaw. Earlier today, the Bucharest nine foreign ministers said nothing good can be expected from Russia's rotating presidency of the United Nations Security Council in April. The summit of the Bucharest Nine, a group of countries on the eastern edge of NATO, was jointly hosted by the foreign ministers of Romania and Poland in the Polish city of Łódź and was aimed at coordinating their security positions ahead of a full NATO summit in July. Nothing good can be expected from this uh, presidency and I hope that Russia will exercise restraint in exercising this uh, presidency without affecting the efforts at the level of the United Nations and in general the level, um, the, uh, the level of, uh, of uh, the international community as a whole uh, to, um, um, well, to uh, move forward with uh, the resolution of uh, the conflict in uh, Ukraine. It is a very unfortunate coincidence 
evidence that is the result of the internal procedures of the United Nations Security Council. We do not expect anything constructive from this presidency. The Kremlin said on Friday that Russia plans to exercise all its rights at the United Nations as it takes over the rotating presidency of the Security Council in April. The United States on Thursday, March 30th, urged Russia to conduct itself professionally when it assumes the role, saying there were no means to block Moscow from the post. Today, Ukraine marks the anniversary of Bucha recapture after 33 days of occupation. On March 31, 2022, Ukrainian troops liberated the town of Bucha. After the Russians who had occupied the town for a month were driven out, mass graves of civilians were discovered, dozens of bodies in the streets, often with traces of torture. The scale of the atrocity, shocking photos and survivors' accounts have made Bucha a symbol of Russian war crimes committed in Ukraine. Russian evil will collapse right here in Ukraine and will never be able to rise again. Humanity will prevail. Glory to Ukraine. We believe. Strolling under a peaceful blue sky, 71 year old Katerina Kosyk can't help recalling how Russian troops murdered and plundered their way through her charming town one year ago. Among the victims was her 47 year old son in law, a wound that festers despite the rejuvenation Bucha has undergone since its liberation one year ago. Peace. Slava Ukraine. I was just there at the Alley of Glory where they put up these memorials. One needs a very strong heart, whoever's memorial you look at. They were all so young, so beautiful. Many small children are left without parents. People just want to live. We were fine. We were not frightful. Now when I'm in my own house, I don't even make my bed in the morning. I sleep and I'm not sure how I'll flee. I have this backpack ready at all times. And I went outside with it today as well. The Kiev suburb became synonymous with Russian brutality after a military retreat last March revealed ravaged streets scattered with civilian bodies. International investigators are now collecting evidence here and in other places where Ukraine says Russian troops committed widespread atrocities. Moscow denies the allegations. But today, the city is buzzing with life. Young families crisscross central streets and the sounds of construction clatter amid the crisp spring air. On a recent afternoon, excavators trundle up and down Foxhalna Street, where an internationally funded reconstruction effort is aimed at erasing the traces of war. But the scars of war are also seen across the city, where some high-rises remain battered and a scrapyard is full of cars and military vehicles destroyed during the last year's fighting. Fences along Yabluska a street where dozens of local residents were killed are still riddled with bullet holes. Four-year-old Mark Yesipchuk, his little brother and his parents painted their gates on the infamous street. Meanwhile, Russian missiles and drones still threaten the skies above, including during a recent attack, which 29-year-old Daria Yesipchuk, Mark's mother, witnessed with her family. A few days ago, there was a drone attack at night. We heard everything, and my husband even saw how drones were shot down. You hear the automatic gunfire when they shoot them down, and the children ask about it. The children know who the occupiers were and what missiles are. We were without phones. We didn't have electricity. We sat on our beanbag chairs. We slept on them, and when we went outside, there was blood everywhere. And there were tanks and helicopters, shot down, I think, and continuous tracks of armored vehicles. There were so many of these tracks. I got scared, and there was blood there, too. Mayor of Bucha, Antoli Fedoruk, said residents are eager to close a deeply painful chapter. We still can't imagine stability, even feeling stability, nowhere in this country. And Bucha isn't an exception. It's this kind of incredible desire for nothing to visually remind us of what the Russians did and left in their wake. This desire is in the heart, the soul, and the mind of every Bucha resident. That's why Bucha has today turned into an anthill of reconstruction. A priest at a local Ukrainian Orthodox parish, Andriy Holovin, said that while many here remained convinced of a Kiev victory, the emotional wounds could take generations to heal. We should understand that it's easy to rebuild walls, but it's much harder to rebuild an injured soul. On Thursday, President Volodymyr Zelensky called the liberation of Bucha and other towns around Kiev a symbol of the fact that Ukraine will be able to win this war.
And finally, yesterday, Poland showed off newly delivered Korean-built tanks and howitzers, showcasing a rapidly modernizing military in the wake of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Speaking on a visit to the exercises, Polish President Andrzej Duda said Poland was aiming to build a military strong enough to deter any potential opponent. We are monitoring the situation in Ukraine on an ongoing basis. We are gaining experience there, obtaining information and taking it all into account when it comes to building the Polish armed forces in such a way that they are strong enough to deter any potential opponent. It's a paradox. We spend billions of złotych billions of euros and dollars to buy equipment so that it will not have to be used in combat. Poland agreed the $5.76 billion contract with two South Korean companies to export tanks and howitzers, as well as other weapons including fighter jets and rocket launchers, in August last year, part of a push to ramp up arms imports amid tensions with neighboring Russia. Hyundai Rotem Company's K2 Black Panther tanks and Hanwha Defense's K9 self-propelled howitzers were shown off in a training area in northeastern Poland, close to the border with Russia's Kaliningrad exclave. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But from me, it's have a wonderful evening.